Yes, it is working. It's just random moves, but the computer is actually playing Battleship. Next, let's code an AI that can make smart moves. Hello and welcome. This is Martin from Coding Casuary, and today we are teaching an AI how to play Battleship. As with many other projects, I'm going to start by importing Pygame. Import Pygame. Now with Pygame, there's always a couple things that we have to do is, and one of those things is we have to initialize it. So I'll just say pygame.init. And if we would like to have this little caption at the top of the window when we open up the Pygame window, we can actually change that and set that to pygame dot display underscore set caption and actually this has to be a dot it's dot set underscore caption and now we just pass it a string and i'm just going to call it battleship okay now we create a little pi game loop so this loop will really just be um you know what you've seen in some of my other videos as well so i'll have a variable that i call animating i'm going to set that to true it's a boolean and then i'll say while animating well, what is it that we do while we are animating? The first thing, sometimes I code the second, but I think it makes a lot of sense to actually code this first is to track your user interaction, user interaction for event in pygame.event.get. So we are tracking all of these events and the most important one to be tracked is the user closes the pygame window. If we don't code this, it's going to be very hard to actually close out of the Pygame loop once it's running. So if event.type is equal to pygame.quit, well, in that case, we'll just set animating to false and then the animation will stop. Okay, so this is it for the user interaction part right now. But you know what? We'll straight up introduce the ability to pause the animation as well. At first, we won't be needing this, but Going to be using it later on anyway so we'll have another boolean that will that i'll call pausing and we'll set that a false so here we now have to implement key interaction interaction with the keyboard so we'll say user presses key on keyboard and here we'll say if event.type is equal to pygame.key down so if the user has pressed a key and one of those keys is now pressed down well in that case We'll say, we can use the escape key. Escape key to close the animation and then we'll use the space bar to pause and unpause the animation, okay? So let's start with the um, escape key. If event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore escape, then we'll set animating to false. So this will be, um, similar to or identical to closing the pie game window by clicking on this little x in the top right corner or top left depending on your system so the same thing you can just hit escape i, I sometimes prefer that and now it comes to the pausing part so if event.k is equal to pie game up pie game dot k underscore space in that case we'll set pausing is equal to not pausing and that make sure that it's going to be working in both cases. So the animation is paused and we unpause and we, and we unpause it. And if it's unpaused, so if it's running, we can pause it. Okay. Um, okay. Now that we got that out of the way, it's time for the actual execution. So if not pausing, it's not, if it's not pausing, then well, this is where now all the um, actual action happens. So we'll start by filling the screen. So the first thing that we'll do down here is we'll set, um, draw background and this will just be a screen that we have to fill we haven't really created the screen and we haven't created a color i'm going to be using a global variable that i'll just call gray that will you know refer to the red green and blue values so that's just a a tuple of three values which is the color so the way that we can do this is up here let's just call this part here you know keep everything organized so this is pi game and then we'll have a bunch of global variables i'm going to call this setting up pi game 
and now we'll define the global variables. For now, let's just set screen as equal to pygame.display set mode, not set caption. And we'll set this to, you know, a width and a height. And these will be global variables. So width, let's just set this to 1000 and let's just set height to, I don't know, 600. And uh, now down here, I said fill with a color gray. So let's create a, another set of global variables, which will be the colors and gray. We'll simply define a rather dark color, 40, 50, and 60. So that shouldn't be too bright. Let's run this and there we go. We now have our little screen. And let's just see if we can alter the color by changing our definition of gray. I'm gonna exit out of this, set this to 200. It's not working and the color was indeed pretty dark actually. Now the problem is that down here, I forgot to flip the screen, I always do. Update screen, we were just looking at the raw Pygame window with nothing in it. So it did not even include the background that we wanted it to have. So we have to include pygate.display.flip. And now um, let's run this once more. And there we go, the screen is now blue because I had changed this value up here. So let's change this back to 60. And now it's a gray screen, great. So the next thing that we have to do now that we have our little game screen, this thing right here, we have to add um, the grids to it. So there, ha there has to be a total of four grids because every player has one grid where they position their ships. And then they have a second grid, which is where they keep track of their search efforts in terms of finding the other player ships. Okay, so we have to have four grids on the screen here. And to do that, we'll first define a variable that specifies how large the individual cells will be. And I'm just gonna call that sq underscore size for square size. And I'm gonna set that to 45. And in addition to that, we'll also need a, well, actually two variables specifying the margins between the different grids, because if we don't have any margins in between them, it will just be, well, one gigantic grid and you couldn't really tell the difference between the four. So I'm gonna create a horizontal margin, which I'll call H margin. And I'm gonna set that to, you know, square size times four. Up, oh, don't need that. And then we'll have a vertical margin and we'll set that simply to square size. Now you, you don't need these variables, but I think it's nice to have them so I can explicitly refer to them later on. And you know, I don't have to use multiples of the square size. Plus, you know, I can also easily change the margins if I don't like them. And then lastly, I think we'll make the width and the height dependent on the square size because these two things, I mean, the whole thing has to add up eventually. So the width cannot be independent from the you know size of the individual square. So here we'll now say square size. There is 10 columns of squares in each grid. So let's just set that to 10. It's a 10 by 10 grid. There's two grids for each player in the horizontal dimension. So we'll have four grids, two at the top, two at the bottom. And then we also have to add the horizontal margin into that mar margin. Now with the height, it's pretty similar. So we'll say square size times 10 times two, and then we'll add the vertical margin, same thing. And then we can get rid of this. Let's run this, the code still works. The window is now a little larger, but it's still there. Okay, and now let's define a second color in which we'll be drawing the grid. I'll call that, well, simply white. And white has to be three pretty large numbers. And I'm gonna pick 255, 250, and 250. Now that we have done that, I think it's time to create a little function that draws a grid. So I'm gonna exit out of this. And now here, function to draw a grid. This is what we'll be doing now. So def define a new method. I'm gonna call it draw grid. And we'll have to specify an X and Y location off the top left corner of that grid. And since later on, I think I'm gonna be using X and Y again. So here, I'm not gonna call it X and Y, but I'll just say left and top. So here we are specifying the top left corner of, of the grid, okay? Now we'll say for I in range 100, because in a 10 by 10 grid, there will be 
100 cells. And now we'll, we'll be creating each of these cells. So we'll say um, what the X location of that cell is and what its Y location is. The X location is, you know, the column in which this is in. And if we number all of these cells starting in the top left and then moving across the first row and then going into the second row, moving across that row and so on, the column position of each index can be computed as I and then we'll use the, the module operator and we'll set set this to 10 because there is 10 columns in, in each of the grids. And then we'll multiply that by the square size. And then we'll do the same thing with Y. But here, we'll just use a simple integer division. Now, if you don't know what that is, um, so I um, is anything between 0 and 99. And we'll now be dividing this by 10 and rounding down. So at first, we'll be dividing 0 by 10. That is 0. We are in, you know, in, in the first row, row 0. And then comes index one, we divide that by 10 and round down still zero. And that keeps on going until we reach nine, divide by 10, still zero if we round down. And then comes index 10, we divide by 10, that is one, we round down still one, we are now in, in the second row, which is indexed with one. So this is how this second line of code works. And now that we have created these X and Y locations, we can now easily create a little square, using pygame.rect and we'll just say xy square size and square size. So we're using the same thing here twice because it's a square and we use the x and y locations. And now we use a, another function out of the pygame library which is pygame.draw.rect. Now we have to specify where we are drawing it. So we are drawing it onto the screen using a white color. What is it that we are actually drawing? We are drawing this square. And then we specify a width. I'm going to set that equal to three. That's just how thick the margin or not the margin, the border around each square will be. And if I coded this correctly, we should now be able to draw grid, to draw a grid down here. So draw grids. So I'm going to say draw grid without anything in there. And then I'm going to run this. And voila, there we go. This is our first grid. Now let's see if this works correctly and if I can move this around. So. Now, let's just say the left will be, the top left corner will be indented by say 100. And if we do that, unfortunately that's not working because we haven't implemented that yet. We just created these two function parameters, but down here we have not added that. So we'll have to say left plus i and top plus i. And if we do that, we should now be able to indent this a little bit over to the right. Let's see whether the top parameter works as well. So now let's say top is equal to 500. Let's run this and yeah, now it's pushed down a lot. So this appears to be working. We can now draw these different grids. So let's just draw two grids just because we can. I'm gonna set that to zero and that to 200. There we go. So you see they're overlapping and the challenge now is to allocate the four grids that we need onto the screen and one has to go in each corner. And the way that we are going to do this is we'll first, we'll, we'll differentiate between the two types of grids. Okay. So we have search grids where players mark their search efforts. And then we have the um, position grids. So this is where the players have their, their ships located. Okay. This is where they, you know, in, in the physical version of the board game, this is where they would stack their little plastic ships onto the board to keep things simple. I don't really know if there's a best way to do that, but I'm going to position the ships of player one in the bottom left grid and the ships of player two in the top right corner. I think later on this will make things a little bit easier. This means the search grids are in the top left and bottom right corner. Okay, so draw a grid in the top left corner. Well, that should be easy. Just draw a grid. We've seen that before. Now for the search grid of the other player, I mean, we're again going to be using draw grid, but this now has to go in the bottom right corner. So we have to indent this. We have to have a left indent and it has to move over half of the screen. Now this is width minus the horizontal margin. And then we have to divide that by two. 
and then add in the horizontal margin. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that should do the trick. So let's draw this. I get an error and it says, okay, width, I misspelled that. Easy fix. And there we go, we moved it over, but now we have to move it down as well. So, um, you know what? We can actually use that for the um, position grid of player two. But yeah, we have to move it down as well. So now we have to introduce a top indent and that's pretty much the same thing. So I'm just gonna copy that and exchange width with height and the two edge margins with the vertical margins. So let's run this and now we have three grids on our screen. Good. And then we just have to have the, the last grid, which is the position grid of player one. So let's copy this once more, but this time no left indent, only a top indent. And then we have four grids on our screen and yeah this is i think this is good progress we are now ready to place a bunch of ships down here and some more ships over here and then the two players will be using this grid this will be the um, search grid of player one and then player one will try to find the ships that are located over here and you know then mark up here where he has found uh, the ships and then the same thing for player two who is trying to find the ships from over here